So, I'm done. The next class is January 24th, Intro to Music of Fundamentals. You have your page numbers. Um, is there any comment or question? Um, so music came from religion, from like churches. Is that where it began? Well, music didn't come from there. The notation came from there. Music. See, the thing is, that's a, that's a good question. All the time, these monks are uh, singing uh, hymns written 500 years ago in the Holy Land at their monastic services. Is that what the Hunter on the Hill is, is singing in the, in the bar rooms and the uh, inns and the taverns and in the fields? No, no, it's not. Uh, but that music didn't get written down. Now, what we will do very soon, thanks for asking that. You're, you're about two weeks ahead of me, or, or you're about a week ahead of me. You're two classes ahead of me. What we will soon discover is... Uh, Although the, the purpose of the music notation was to preserve the sacred music, and not even the music is, wasn't even that important. It was the texts that were important. The purpose of the sacred music was to glorify the sacred texts, and so we had to have the same tune sung in every uh, church in Europe. Uh, the purpose of the music was to preserve the sacred texts, but that doesn't mean... That that's the only kind of music that w was being made. Yeah. There was lots of people who were d dancing jigs out in the street. There were hunting songs. There were work songs. And all those things eventually worked their way into the church music. But like I say, you're about two classes ahead of me. Um, so it, it's not fair to say that um, music comes from religion. Although most people think that mu music is a religious act, and uh, including me, but uh, it was the the uh, see the the reason why did the why was the church why did the the church end up being the one to do this? Mm, how, how well? What if somebody else wanted to be the same? What 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 does the church have over anybody else? And the other huh? Power. In other words, for power, money. money. The church had the money, and they had. See, the thing is, if you go back to the medieval period, a young person had three possibilities: he could stay living on the land he was born on and never travel 25 miles from wherever he was born for his whole life; he could go into the military. In the medieval period, um, the military was kind of like hockey. It was a seasonal activity, and if you got killed, that was your bad luck. I mean, people get killed playing hockey too, you know. But they would, go, you know, they they would in the spring they would go out and fight a war with somebody, and then they, that, that was over. But they got to they got to, you know, wear armor, and they got to have a horse, and you know, they got uh, fed pretty well. Or you could join the church. A lot of young people, mo mostly men, but there were women too. Um, joined up with the church because it was the only uh, uh, growth industry <laughs> available. You know, it wasn't necessarily out of religious fervor. It was because it was an, a, a life option. And uh, you know, this business about uh, you know celibacy and uh, and uh, abstinence and stuff like that. Forget about it. They're they're they 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 took apart this wall in this convent uh, some years ago. And uh, they found buried in this wall hundreds, hundreds of little baby skeletons. Where these, so these nuns were not exactly uh, of unworldly. So the fact that you uh, became a monk or a nun didn't mean necessarily that you, that you were denied worldly pleasures. It just meant that you had to be cool about it. You know. Um, so, so uh, the medieval period is is a kind of a raunchy period in that way. There's lots of of uh, risque things that went on, uh, but there was always this overarching philosophy that 
God is at the root of all things, and everything else springs from that. And uh, they returned their artistic inspirations back to the church from whence it basically originated, if that makes any sense. Question. I will um, walk right saying, in there and tell them this, this stuff is missing. Yes, what? Okay. You were saying that Western monks developed the, the or the noom is the um, cliche, right? Of, yes. It's the first and, type and of notes. A, the, the noom is, and, a, is a kind of a symbolic representation of that cliche, yes. And the monks developed that? Yes. Okay. In the monasteries over a period of... Uh, Many years. These uh, these original uh, how we study medieval music is uh, you know these these um, manuscripts are created at uh, this monastery or that monastery or this monastery, and they wind up in museums or libraries in different places in Europe, and they sit there and turn into uh, old crusty little crumbly pieces of paper over a hundred years, and then about 1850 or so, it wasn't until hundreds of years after this music ceased to exist, really, uh, or ceased to be actively studied, that, that musicology was invented and people started going back into these old uh, backroom libraries. And, you know, remember, remember in, uh, in Lord of the Rings when Gandalf goes into these ancient libraries and looks for these old papers trying to find the, the legend of Isildur and stuff like that? That's kind of the situation where these uh, old manuscripts were kept. So each of the old manuscripts will contain maybe 100, 200, 300 examples of uh, music notation. And that's where we have uh, uh, derived our library of, uh, of uh, music. And, and again, there's, there's uh, music in the style written in Rome. And then there's, I keep mentioning Rome and Milan as two of the basic ones. And then uh, in Paris, those three are, are, are probably the biggest libraries, I think, maybe in Munich and Berlin as well. Okay, something else? Okay, then, let's quit. This has been totally fun. Thanks very much, and uh, make sure you get your book. Sorry? Somebody say something? No, we're good. Okay, let's quit. Alrighty, I will see you.